Every so often, there's something that comes along that generally makes me say, wow. And Disney has a knack for that. And just recently, I had the privilege to visit Pandora at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I was wowed by the scope and detail of the entire project. Disney has always had this reputation to take an idea and elevate it to the next level. This level of escapism and immersion that is extremely difficult to achieve. And while doing some research, I came across this scrapped Disney project that also took my breath away an immersive project that would have taken us to the seas, and it's called the SS Disney. Truly an idea like this may seem impossible, but Disney always believed in the impossible, and this truly enormous concept was unlike anything before or even after its conception. Imagine for a moment an entire Disney theme park traveling the world's oceans from port to port. That's absolutely what this concept was. Perhaps I can book you on a tour. The chairman of Disneyland International was at a fundraising dinner seated right next to a U.S. Navy admiral, who joked that he had an extra aircraft carrier and that he should just build a Disney park on top of it. Regardless of the joking nature, this idea blew his mind and the next day he proposed it to the Disney team, whom fast-tracked the idea by building a large-scale model and coming up with how this concept could realistically work. The goal behind the SS Disney was to bring the Disney theme park experience to locations around the world where they knew they would never build a theme park. Originally focusing on locations like Europe, South America, Southeast Asia, Australia, and the Mediterranean, with later focus on the West Pacific port cities, Australia, Dubai, and even Hawaii. The idea was for the ship to stay at a port for about two to three months and then travel to the next destination, only visiting the same port every four to five years. While this idea may seem impossible, the massive size and cavernous volume inside the ships allowed Disney Imagineers to structurally add about five decks of attractions inside the vessel, while also adding attractions on the top deck. So let's say hypothetically the SS Disney just happens to dock at a port near you. What could you have expected from this experience? Into the boat! Your Disney vacation would have started on the dock itself with ticket booths, the main gate, food venues, even shops. This somewhat acted like Main Street. Now once you moved into the floating vessel, you'll enter this glass midsection of the ship which acts kind of like the hub area at the Disney parks. This divided the lands on the ship. Now there's a total of 18 attractions, that's about half the rides of a full Disney theme park. On one end of the ship, you'll find Fantasyland with iconic attractions such as Casey Jr. Train, the Mad Hatter's Teacups, Dumbo, It's a Small World. And on the opposite side, you'll have Tomorrowland and Adventureland with the Orbitron, a large Ferris wheel, even Space Mountain which was housed inside the boat. Other attractions found inside were Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin, a full Toontown area, Little Mermaid and Aladdin Dark Rides, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a 3D theater with either the Muppets 3D or a brand new Lion King show, Star Tours, and an Indiana Jones roller coaster. With this idea fully realized, everything seemed to be on course. The planning group behind the project was ready for development with hopes to set sail before the millennia. That was until Frank Wells tragically passed away. When discussions were eventually brought back up, the idea to do a Disney Cruise Line instead was much easier to do, and the teams were split up to pursue that project, as well as the first location-based entertainment project, Disney Quest. With Disney parks spanning from California, Florida, Paris, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Shanghai, and a fleet of Disney Cruise Lines, the idea of a traveling Disney floating theme park seems like an idea that never will come to fruition. And with that, that is how the SS Disney was scrapped. Thanks again for watching this episode of Scrapped. I really dug this idea and I kind of wish it came to the sea, although I realized that it would have never really been to a port that I live near, so I probably would have never experienced it. So the question for you, would you have gone to an SS Disney and have you been to a Disney park or a Disney cruise line? With that said guys, thank you for watching this episode of Scrapped. My name is Chris and you've just been crisscrossed. Peace out and have fun.